In this video, we will be talking about osteogenesis imperfecta as well as collagen and why this disease is important. To begin with, this disease is a genetic bone disorder, also referred to as brittle bone disease, and it's caused by a wide variety of gene defects, but most commonly it's due to issues with COL1A1 and COL1A2. These genes code for type 1 collagen. The most common form is an autosomal dominant inheritance with decreased production of type 1 collagen. And let's remind ourselves that type 1 collagen is the predominant collagen in osteoid. Osteoid allows the bone to be somewhat flexible, but also maintain its strength. Additionally, if you take a look at this image over here about how collagen is formed, if there are issues forming the triple helix as shown over here, it can cause osteogenesis imperfecta. Something else that's interesting is that scurvy or vitamin C deficiency results in the inability to hydroxylate proline or lysine. And you can see that occurs right over here. And if there are issues with that, they can't form the triple helix and collagen is degraded in the cell without being secreted. And so as you can imagine, they can present with kind of similar symptoms to osteogenesis imperfecta, but not exactly the same. And so back to osteogenesis imperfecta, how do these patients present? Well, they'll present with fractures and bone deformities after very minimal trauma, which can be also sometimes confused with child abuse. Something interesting is that they have blue sclera, and that's due to the translucent connective tissues that overlie the choroidal veins in the eye. Additionally, they have abnormal teeth that wear down easily and conductive hearing loss due to issues with the little bones in the ear called the ossicles that help conduct sound. However, some people may have mild forms in which they only have premature osteoporosis or severe postmenopausal bone mineral loss. And then to treat them, they'll often be treated with a bisphosphonate to decrease the fracture risk. People with osteogenesis imperfecta also have associated mitral valve prolapse. And then lastly, something else about this disease is that patients with this disorder should never get intraosseous access. So that's what happens when they take a drill and they drill into your bone marrow because they have trouble getting an IV. This is important and this kind of makes sense because you have bone issues so you don't want to damage the bone even more. Now that we have discussed osteogenesis imperfecta type 1, which is appropriately named due to issues with type 1 collagen, what is osteogenesis imperfecta type 2? Well, it's a much more severe form of osteogenesis imperfecta that is also due to problems with type 1 collagen. And often we don't hear about it because the fetuses with this disorder often die in utero or at a very young age. They usually die due to fractures or pulmonary failure. Now let's sum up the important facts of this video. Osteogenesis imperfecta is a genetic bone disorder, also referred to as brittle bone disease, caused by a wide variety of gene defects. These genes usually code for type 1 collagen, and they'll present with fractures, hearing loss, short stature, increased laxity of joints, scoliosis, and easy bruisability. Type 2 osteogenesis imperfecta is often more severe, and the fetuses often die in utero or at a young age. So thank you for watching this video, and if you got this far, please give this video a like and share it. Comment below with questions or if you want us to make a video on a different topic. Lastly, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a future video.